Well, welcome back to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about and show you um, my chipping techniques with uh, hairspray and things like that. But before we get to that, I have some exciting things that came in. Uh, remember earlier on when I, well, these glasses are dirty. Um, remember early on when I told you I was waiting for some parts to come in, I designed the, like the motor cradle and the, the DCC board mount and the speaker um, enclosure and all that. Well, that came in today. I haven't cleaned it off, but I did test it and everything works beautifully. So let me get the camera set up over here. I'll show you all that stuff and then we'll get to the main feature of painting and chipping. All right, so I grew a little bit of a few same brain cells to put a piece of tape so I know where the center of my camera is. So anyway, I had told you earlier that I had, um, was waiting on things and I got them in. So um, I got the motor cradles in. Now you'll notice one's cut off because I've played around with it and tested it. And I'll explain what all of this stuff is. But anyway, these proboscises sit protruding off the ends, that is the portion that you I'll cut off, I'll put the screw through and that'll isolate the screw from the frame and stuff. You'll see there's a hole in the bottom here. That will go through there. I made it longer because I didn't know how long I needed to make it. So when it's all assembled I can mark on when I put this through the frame and up through the the uh, motor cradle, I can mark where I need to cut and I made a special tool now because I know what the height is. It's uh, 90,000, so I laminated two pieces of um, 80,000, uh, sorry, 80, two pieces of 40 thousandths with a piece of 10 thousandths in between, so that gives me my 90 thousandths. So that's the motor cradle, and I'll show you it all set up here in just a second. The next part is the DCC board mount. So these came in a set of four. So I've got the where the board mounts on these pads here. And then the Keep Alive will snap into that. And these, this T-slot is for the wires to come up through the, from the motor. So I'll show you that in a second. And then the final thing is I got in a bunch of um, speaker enclosures. And the speaker fits like a glove in these things. So I've got one of those cut off and, and such to show you. And... Um, uh, I still have to clean all these parts, and the way that I clean them is I first, they're, they're not super fine detailed parts, so I boil them for like a few, maybe 30 seconds or so, and it'll melt that, that, um, that, what do you think, that wax off of them and stuff, and I still have to find out, you know, like what the preferred method that people use to clean these parts, but I've been boiling them, so anyway, so this is the frame. I'm not going to use because I cut it. Remember, I put the I wanted to test putting Kato trucks underneath it. And I probably could still use it again. I just need to fill in here with the proper thickness of plastic and stuff to, to put. But I'm not worried about it. I'll, I'll cut some different frames. So anyway, this frame is cut for the motor cavity and, or for the motor cradle. I had to cut it down. I'll, I'll refresh or... Um, recap what I've done to the frame and then we'll show you all the parts in it. So the floor where the motor sits was cut down 30 thousandths. The, the bottom of this motor cradle is 20 thousandths which allows the motor to be even with the top of the frame. Now I had to cut the hole, the screw hole, to 125 thousandths or an eighth inch for this proboscis to go through. And, and such. So the the motor, oh and then I've cut the back off of here. Um, it used to come to about here and so I, I just made it even with, the, this was already stepped down back here so I just made this all even all the way across for the, um, where's my speaker, this is it, I have to clean it up still, but for the speaker enclosure to fit right like that. Now this little step here in the speaker enclosure is to go over the gear uh, worm gear clip on the truck so I could I could put the speaker in like that so um, the way the speaker enclosure is set up is I have mounting holes here and here that I will mark on the frame and drill and tap the frame then I can just and I I countersunk these holes really deep 
and then I can just put a, a 080 screw down in through there and just secure the, the speaker to the frame. Um, there's holes for screws inside for the holes in the speaker so I can thread these holes for 080 and then put the speaker in. So you can see how the speaker fits. Now also, real quick, let me zoom in here. See if it zooms in on my dot. There we go. You'll see, maybe you can't, I don't know, right here and here there are two grooves built into this. That is for the wires from the speaker to come up through so I can, so I don't have to, you know, like file a part of the speaker to get the wires up through. This is, these are the diameter, a little bit bigger than the diameter of the uh, wire that I'll be using and then I can route it to the, uh, to the uh, decoder. So the speaker, like I said, it fits like a glove. Put it in there and you can see that it fits beautifully right in there like that. Then that's going to sit right back here like this. The wires will come out there and they'll go right over to where the board goes. Now let's do the motor. So I got the top of the motor marked and the screw holes in the front. So let's turn this the way that I usually work like that. So the motor, to turn that around, the motor just, so real quick, the features. So I've got the hole in the bottom for the mounting screw to go through. I've got the ends enclosed, as you can see here, so it fits the motor snugly. And I got the cutouts for the, um, where the shaft comes out and stuff. I've got, you'll see this groove in the bottom here. That's a recess for the wire from the bottom of the motor. You'll see the groove right there also for the wire from the bottom of the motor to have clearance and to come up through the, um, through the side of the frame. So this will fit right in here like that. As you can see, it's as high as the motor. You'll see there's the recess for the wire. So there's clearance and it'll come over and go up this groove here and then out the top. And then I have a cutout that I showed you um, or that you've seen in the, in the DCC board mount for the middle because I'm going to solder a, a wire up to here too. So now this fits right down in there. Now I had to, these, these enclosures or the, uh, the motor cradle, they come with sharp corners here. And I did that for the strength when they're building the part. Now, what I did is after I got it, because of these, these radiuses inside, I can't fit the sharp corner down in there because of the radiuses. But it's a very, very small amount that needs to be removed. So I have a corner rounding milling bit that I just corner rounded these, basically routed these round. So now that just drops down like that. Now, like I said, this proboscis piece is now cut to size so I can put that in there like that and then the screw I need my optivisors I can't see crap the screw will go in if I can get it to not be magnetized in my screw tweezers. There we go. Screw goes in like that. And then I just need to find the threads. There we go. And now it's, it's in there. See? Now, like I said, these speakers are really snug. I can't shake them out. So those are going to, that'll sit like that. And then this, here I have a dummy or a junk board. So this board, this is the, uh, um, a Loke Sound uh, Direct Select, yes. Um, this was a, a board that didn't work, so I keep it, to, I use it as for measuring and, and getting clearance and stuff. So this will sit here, and as you see, I've got, probably need to adjust this T over, but I really don't, doesn't really matter. So this will sit on top of here like this. 
These holes are really small so that I can use them to mark the frame and then I'll drill them out for 080s, a clearance for 080s. So these are the pads here that the uh, DCC board will sit on and you'll see that they sit and there's a little bit of clearance for wires to run underneath them so it'll sit like that and then I don't have it out, I have them in the drawer but the um, the, um, the um, keep alive or the power pack will snap right into there and then I can just run the wires right over to there. Now what I'll do is the power pack has the um, the board piggybacking on top, what I'll do is I'll desolder that and put the board in line with the power pack and then just solder the wires up to the, uh, the decoder. So that's a nice tidy little package right there. I'll bring the wires up from the motor, they'll go under the board and they'll come to these to the landings here and then I've got the speaker wires coming out here and I'll just run those along here and they'll go down to the speaker um, uh, the, the speaker pads. Now what I could, probably could do is I could probably put a little channel in here like a tunnel and bring the wires out and go through the tunnel to keep them nice and tidy and do that. I think I'll do that for a revision to this design. So that's the way that sits. Let me clip these wires off. I don't need this on here. And let's see how it fits in the frame. Okay. So that's how that fits. Now let's see how this all fits. What's going on here? There we go. Okay, I see that I need to trim those wings down a little bit on there. There we go. That's how it all fits inside. So there it is. There it's down snug. So I'll, I'll trim a little meat off the uh, outsides, off the outside wings here just a little bit. And oh, I need to corner round those a bit too because they come up right to the underside of this where the roof starts rounding. So I'll take care of that. I see some see some fixes I need to do in there. So I'll take care of that. That's no big deal. And but that's pretty much how it sits in there. So we have the room for it. Now it's it, the frame's falling out because the shell is sitting on the uh, on the table and it, there's nothing to hold the frame together. So there's the frame locked in like that. So everything's in there. Um, I do need, there's clearance to the roof for the speaker. Well, this thing seems flopping around. There's clearance to the roof for the speaker. It's just the sides are a little tight on the, on the shell and I need to corner around that, that top surface. I remember that I um, said I was going to do that too as part of the design. Um, I mean, do it on my mill. But um, I think it's going to work out really, really nice and everything fits the way I want it to. Yep, I just need to take a little bit off the sides and it'll slide right in just fine. Oh, I see why. <laughs> let me let me do something. You see these I forgot to clean off these tabs where they connect the parts together. So let's try that and see what happens. Cleaned all the other ones off on the other parts. Just not enough. Okay, let's see how this goes now. Let's see how that fits. Oh, there we go. That slides in there just fine. There we go. So that was it. So I don't need to trim anything off. So that's how it fits. Everything fits nice and snug and everything's where it's supposed to be so we're we're good to go on that okay all right so now let me set the camera up over at the uh the paint area 
and we'll get to doing some painting and chipping. Oh. All right, sorry folks, a slight detour. Um, I just wanted to show you this. I thought I was just gonna have to corner around this outside edge to get the shell to fit down properly, but that didn't work. Um, the outer edge on this wider portion was interfering slightly with the curvature on the inside of the cell, oh, cell inside of the shell. So what I did is I just simply cut, um, put the milling bit up to this edge and then cut down 60 thousandths all the way across and that seemed to do it perfectly because as you can see, let me put this here, this slips on just fine now. I mean if it was secured in place it would be better but it goes on just fine now. And you can see this moves around on the inside easily but that will be secured and there's no frame protruding out the bottom anymore. So that fits perfectly. So now on to the painting and chipping. Okay, so I'm set up at my paint bench. Now I'm not going to show you me painting the trucks black. It's just shooting the paint through the airbrush. Um, I'm not going to show you uh, me shooting the hairspray on. It's just shooting the hairspray through the airbrush. So, um, and I don't think that's, you need to see me doing that, and you won't see anything anyway. Um, the way that I have my booth set up and all that is just not conducive to, uh, to filming, where other people have their, all this fancy camera stuff, you know, hanging and things like that. I don't, so I just put the camera right in front of me and point it down at my workspace. So anyway, let's get to this. Now... So these trucks have been painted and have had a uh, satin varnish put on it. Now my satin varnish I use is a um, mixture of Tamiya gloss and flat. So it's two-thirds uh, flat to one-third gloss. So what I do is I have one of these big Tamiya jars and I put two jars of flat in it and one jar of gloss and then just shake it well and it comes up to a really nice satin finish as you can see on here. I like I like the sheen on it. It's going to um, protect the paint and uh, and things like that. Now the color I used originally um, for my chipping brown color, you know a long time ago like I said in another video I bought into the all the uh, um, AK Interactive stuff and all the MIG stuff and it just it's I, I don't like those paints and I don't like how they you know when they dry they tear and um, with chipping and stuff so I've gone back to using the paints that I know and that I like a lot so with Tamiya I mixed up this with I think it was red brown and some black and and things like but I and, and these are painted with that now recently when I was at my local hobby store they carry the full line of mission model paints which I like a lot um, because you can use them with their polyurethane additive to harden them and to make them more durable or without the polyurethane additive which is really good for chipping and once the paints dry you know you put a clear coat over it and it's it's hardened and, and all that so I like their paint a lot for instance this car that I'm working on I'm hoping to finish it this weekend or this coming weekend this gondola that I'm working on I found this from Mission Model Paint. It's their Dark Rust. Imagine that, Dark Rust. So um, I put that on this car, and the colors are extremely similar. I mean, very, very similar. So this is going to be my base coat um, for the chipping color. It's the part number. You can't read this portion of it, but it's MMW-001 Dark Rust. I like it a lot. It comes with a shaker ball in the bottle and stuff and thinning it properly. Uh, you can use Mr. Color leveling thinner on it. It works. Or you can use their own, um, their own thinner, which works really well, of course, also. Now, when I put the paint on this, on this car, I did use their polyurethane additive. And following the directions, it's like two to three drops per um, ten drops of paint. And it does thicken the paint a little bit, so you have to thin it a little bit differently. You know, not your usual um, thinning I do with the with uh, the standard thinning. You have to thin it a little bit more. But 
it shoots on well. It's the the paint really lays down nice. It's very creamy, very smooth, and 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 that. So I really like Mission Model paints, and I'm I'm gonna start using them more. I'll start. I'll use the um, Tamiya paints and the Mission Model paints depending on you know what I want to do. So, but for the top coat, the the top coat of for the chipping, you know, the paint you want to chip. I'm not going to use the polyurethane additive. I'll just use straight paint and, and thin. So they say um, about two to three drops of thinner per paint, but I I usually do pretty much for flat paints. I do um, one part paint to half part thinner, and that's what I'll do with this. And so what I'm going to do, let me move these out of the way. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of the name Mike Rinaldi. He's a master um, modeling artist, and he just does some of the most beautiful work with paint and weathering and stuff. Well, he suggested using this, this hairspray, Tresemme um, uh, Ultra Fine Mist, and it's a medium hold. That's what the, I think these three dots are. I got this at Walmart. And uh, it works, I found it works really well. Now you can use it right out of the can, just hold your model about arm's length away and, and mist it on. But what I do is I decant it into a bottle and I put it into my airbrush. I have more control over it. Um, that way um, I can make sure that I cover all the parts. Because when you mist it on, even though it covers well, it can miss little pixel parts and stuff like that. So. Um, I've seen Mr. Rinaldi do some amazing work with like um, uh, um, winter camouflage on, on tanks and stuff like that and using that hairspray and taking it, it just looks beautiful. So um, it also he's the one that mentioned um, um, using Mission Model Paint. So I thought, you know what, he uses it. I'm going to give it a try and see how it works. And I, I really like the results. So, and thankfully my local hobby store carries this paint. One word of um, or tip or whatever do not go by their color chart it isn't even close to what their paint color is so you're just going to have to hopefully have a store in your area that has the paint i mean i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to find paint for this and their color chart their color chart showed that let me see if i can find it on here real quick um, it's called, they don't even have it on their color chart, it's a new color. Well, at the store, their, their, their color chip with the paint showed that bright blue was pretty much exactly like this. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's not even close. If you look at that, that's pretty dark, and it's got a lot more purple in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't go by their color chart. Plus, their, um, oh, I can show you on the color chart on this one. This one's on there, the Dark Rust. That is uh, right there. So if you look at that color, it's got a lot more red in it. And if you look this color next to it, it's got a lot more brown to it. So their, their color chart is not exactly accurate and doesn't help you that much. So, okay. Let's not let this video run too long because I got to do the chipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my airbrush and I'm going to coat the outside surfaces and you only need to let it dry for as long as it takes to clean the airbrush because this stuff dries fast. So I'll do that to both of these parts. Once that's dry and there's nothing to show you because once it's dry it'll look like that still. It'll have, a, have that um, um, satin sheen to it. So once that's dry, then I'll load up my airbrush with my black and I will paint the black on it. Now, with um, you can chip gloss colors. It's a lot more work because what's happening is you need to get that paint or that water through the paint. With flat colors, it's a bit more porous, so the water will go through it and activate the, the hairspray because hairspray is soluble in water and it'll give you the chipping effect. With gloss paints, 
that paint is tighter so it it creates a, a, a tighter bond with the part and it doesn't let water through as easily as you'll notice on on gloss paint water will beat up I'm not saying it can't get through it but it's harder to get through it so what I'm trying to get at in the in the short term here is after I put the top coat on you can let the part sit for a while you might even be able to let them sit for a day um, with flat paint on it with gloss paint on it I wouldn't let it sit very long before you start trying to chip it so I'm gonna paint these black I'm gonna let this black dry for probably an hour because I, I don't want the paint to be too fragile before I start chipping it this paint if you don't use the poly polyurethane additive is really soft so I want to let it cure for a little bit maybe an hour maybe two hours and then I'll come back with the magic of video it'll be like it just happened I'll come back and we'll start the chipping now what I use to chip with of course I've got my water here I've got a q-tip here this will stop the chipping action um, if you get if you get the chips to the way that you want them, you go, oh man I really like that I don't want them to chip anymore just take a cotton bud and roll it to soak up the water and it'll stop the action uh, chipping action the things that I use to chip with are these brushes here they range from soft which I don't really ever use this brush much um, but I'll show you I'll, I'll tell you what I do use this brush for in a second to really stiff these are really stiff brushes these this one's really really stiff as, as is this one most of these are stiff this one's semi stiff this one's not super stiff but it's not super soft either this one's really good for pulling little bits of paint off same with this one's not super stiff but it's 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 soft enough or stiff enough to to give some pressure to the paint and then these ones I like this one because as I've used it the tips have curled a little bit so I can use it as a hook and pull into the paint a little bit so and this one this is the one that's like really stiff this is the one I've used on gloss paint so I really you know dig into it to break the paint loose and then start pulling it and stuff like that now the other thing you can use to make scratches you can use a sharpened toothpick and you don't want to like dig that into the paint um, what I find is good for is if you just gently go across the surface like in the in the pattern that you want what you've done is you've broken that that paint loose from the um, from the uh, plastic or the model a little bit and that's when I'll come in with a soft brush with water and then I'll go over that area and it'll pull that paint out of the scratch so you'll get that that chipping color underneath and you'll get that scratch to look into it so that's what you use that for same with this brush I'll do it the same with if I need a little bit more pressure that brush and and that brush but with the scratches you don't need to scratch through to the chipping color you just need to break that paint a little bit and then the water when you use a brush will, will clean it off so let me go ahead and get these prepped and we'll get to some chipping okay it's been two hours and this paint has dried well wow I'm extremely pleased with how smooth this paint goes on I don't know if you can see that but it is really smooth now when I paint over the the um, or a actually when I add the hairspray also I don't blow it on I put it on in light even coats there's about two coats of hairspray on here and then when I uh, I let the the hairspray dry for about a, as long as it takes me to clean the airbrush and then I put the paint on and with the paint also don't blow it on you don't want thick heavy paint blobs you want just nice light even coats so the chipping for this these trucks it's not going to be very heavy and you probably won't even see it that much let me zoom in here some let's see if that'll there we go and um, so I just want little prickles of paint 
So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the here because I can handle it. So what I'm going to do, and hopefully you'll be able to see this, I'm going to start with this brush, just dip it into, just dip it into some water. Oh wait, let me get a paper towel out here real quick. There we go. All right, so I want to get, I want to do a little bit of chipping in this area, a little bit maybe over here, maybe a tiny bit on the on the brake cylinder. So let's try a brake cylinder first. So let's get some wetness on here. And I'm just going to dab at it a little bit. It doesn't, it's not a magical thing that it all of a sudden it just starts happening. You have to work at it. So just take your time. Maybe put on a TV show or actually there's nothing to watch on TV. So Okay, so, so when I don't see things, I see some paint coming off. If I don't see things, I'll go to my... My usual go-to brush, this guy that has the little hooks on it. Start stabbing at it. There we go. Now I'm getting some paint off. Just a little tiny bit. Okay. All right, now I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on there or not, but there's a little bit taken off. Let me get my pointer. Here we go. Right in these areas right here. Right in here. And I can't see it on the screen, but maybe on the on the full screen you'll be able to see that. So I'm going to do some more right down in in this area here. And just I just do it random. I'm not in any particular um, plan on this. I just want some small prickles. And I'll try different brushes. Like I'll try this stiff one right now. And just let me get some water on there. Soak it down. And just get some prickles going. Break through the paint. I can see these already broke through the paint. So I want to try a soft brush. Get the prickles cleaned off. You can see the black paint coming off right there. Oh, that's looking very, very nice. Now I know you can't see it on camera, but it's giving me exactly what I want with some very, very, very small. Now doing that actually wiped quite a bit off, but you know what? I don't mind that. That doesn't look too bad. So I don't know if you can see that. Now remember, all this is going to be blended in with weathering. I got some paint taken off right in this area here. I 
think that'll work okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna, but you get an idea of how it goes. You just put some water on there and you just start working it the way you want. Um, this paint is still pretty soft, so it's, it's wiping off more than it's chipping off. So I think I'm gonna let it uh, set a little bit longer. But, and for the video, like I said, you can't really see what's going on, but you see the action that you take. You know, you put some, dip your brush in the water, put the water on there, and just start either brushing away at it or taking the toothpick and making a little line and then using some a soft brush and then dipping it in water and wiping it and, and such. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube showing how this is done. I'm not an expert at this. This is just what I've been working on and how I've been and how I've been doing it so so hopefully maybe you get an idea on how to do that and when you put a clear coat over this that chipping will will pop a little bit more and then blending it with uh, with weathering will help make it look look really nice so I'm gonna go ahead and do just a little bit more I don't want a whole lot on this just just a little bit to uh, enhance some of the weathering so that takes care of kind of a, I'm hoping a little bit of a tutorial on chipping uh, and stuff so anyway um, I'll continue with this one and of course with this one and uh, get those done and ready for weathering okay this truck is done and you're not going to be able to see it I'm going to see if I can't just see if that camera can focus on some of the chips and screws grapes and wearing off of the paint now I'm gonna show you here in a second something but this is very subtle the the difference in colors is really hard to see but it's there and it's gonna it's it's part of the layering of, of weathering I guess so this one's done now what I'm gonna show you is what happens when I get bored and I get anxious to get things done and things like that now in the last one I showed you how I went in there like oh I'm gonna be so cool with this I'm gonna show everybody how to precision chip and all that kind of crap don't even I, I'm not even like that so I'm gonna show you what I did to finish that other one so I haven't started on this one yet so here's what I do when I'm like screw it I just want to get this done so I'm gonna load this up with water all over the place let it soften the paint let it soften the paint okay then you're gonna see me just scrub it so you're gonna get the springs Go in there like that, get that, get some here. Just go around. And when I do this, I'm like, screw it, I don't care what it looks like, I just want it done. And it typically ends up looking okay. You can see how much black is coming off. Now I said I didn't want too much to chip off. Well, whatever chips off, chips off. I don't care. I just want to get it done. Because the weathering process is going to make this look actually pretty good. Okay, then I need to get the water off of that. But if I use a Q-tip on this to get the water off, it um, it wipes the paint off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dry it off with the airbrush.
and I'm, when I'm doing the chipping, I always feel like, oh my gosh, I'm chipping off way too much paint. But when I do this and blow it all off, I can see, I mean, I can see, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see that this could stand just a little bit more. I got very, very fine chips along the top here. I got a little bit here, down in there, on top of the springs. And actually, I think I'm going to let that be as it is right there. Because I don't want too much to come off. So I'm going to do this side. So let's go ahead and do this side. We'll use a different brush on this one. I use an even stiffer brush. This one's super stiff. Poke you in the eye with that one. Put your eye out. So let's get some water on there. Let it soak that into that paint. All right, so let's take this one. So where's the center here? Here we go. And just work around. Well, the brush isn't so stiff once it gets wet. But that's okay. Do a little scrubbing action there. A little bit on top of the spring pack. The bottoms. And here, get this little boss there. All right, that's gonna do it. Let me get the airbrush out here. And... Blow the water off. And folks, that's it. That's all the chipping I'm going to do. <laughs> now, a different paint, like for instance, <clears throat> excuse me, Tamiya paint, it'll dry differently. This paint seems to, um, uh, I don't know how to, what the word for it is, but when water hits it, it seems to dissolve a little bit. So you get more of a wearing off action rather than chipping. And with Tamiya paint, what I've found is you get more chipping action where you get sharper edges and, and things like that. But this one here is more like the paint has worn off on the edges and stuff. And I like that a lot. And I think it'll work for this really well. Yeah, I think that'll be it. Now, like I said, you're not going to be able to see, You can't see this on camera. I'm pretty sure you can't. We'll see when I edit the film and put it all together if you can see any of the chipping. But, but that's basically what I've done. So, um, like I said, when I feel like I just want to get it done, I just go at it. And, and that seemed to work out pretty well. I like, I like how these turned out. I, I'm not real good at the precision stuff, and it, a lot of my weathering just happens. Now, let me zoom back here, and I'll show you my airbrush setup. So, I've got this gauge right at the, at the airbrush, and when I paint, I hold it like this so it's not in the way. And I can look and see, like, I have it set to 60 PSI right now, or 50 PSI just to blow the water off. But when I, if you watch the needle, see, you, you think you're spraying at 50 PSI. Now look at that, it's at 46. So when I set my pressure, look at that, it's going down. So when I set my pressure, I usually or shoot at about between 14. I shot these trucks at 14 PSI, but I usually shoot in here. Steinal res I'll do at 30 PSI. But when I set my pressure, I always hold the the trigger down, and then I'll set my pressure on the uh, on the tank 
so that I'll have I'll know what pressure I'm shooting at when I'm when I'm painting. So that's basically my setup right there. Well, that takes care of the first stage of weathering on the trucks. Um, I know I was trying to be precision chipping and stuff, and it just doesn't work. Stuff like that doesn't work out with me. Um, my weathering. I know I, I'm a downer on myself with it, but it really, it just, it just happens. Nothing's planned, and uh, usually the results are like, hey, I can live with that. That looks pretty good. But when I watch these guys on, on um, video, you know, trying to learn some things, like especially the, um, the, the YouTube guy on uh, Night Shift, I like watching him a lot. Um, and I watch some of the tutorials and stuff, and I see them planning their weathering, uh, as far as planning go, that just goes right out the window with me. It just it just happens, and because I'm never happy with with the results that are going on, so I just say screw it. I just start throwing things around, and and it typically comes out okay. <clears throat> so hopefully um, you saw you know a little bit of technique. You know, there's much better videos out there showing technique than what I just showed, but um, I, I like. I, I like the effects that came out on it, and I think the combination of, of adding washes and pigments and, and things like that will work out really well. So um, I'm sorry if you can't see the, the contrast between the black and the brown, but they are both dark, dark colors. So um, that is nothing I can really do about that. But I think the weathering, when I start lightening things and, and contrasting things with the washes and the, and the pigments, um, that'll just add to the layered effect of, of weathering the trucks. Now, again, the washes and the pigments are just, again, just throwing them on there, hoping that they mix and blend right and <laughs> come out the way they're supposed to or the way that I hope they're supposed to. But I'm just going to have fun with it. I don't care. It's, it's going to be all right. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I was really excited about about these items that came in. Um, that really upped my motivation for these FP7s. Um, I did work on um, experimenting with doing the, the back end with the door, the Details West door and stuff like that. I can show you. I started, you know, this is an experimental shell, so I experimented. So the Details West door will go in the back. I did um, design um, windows to be laser cut for the um, the cab windows, the door, the portholes, one for the details west door and one for the as the um, as molded door square. So I'm hoping those will work out okay. The only one that I'm really concerned about is this angled window right up here, this one here. So um, I might have to do some more test shots to get that right, but keep my fingers crossed that it it'll come out okay so I'm excited about getting those in and stuff like that so again if you stayed with me through this video thank you very much I appreciate you taking the time out of your day I'm sure there's all kinds of other things you can do um, to watch the video and um, I appreciate it I really do so thank you very much for walking I'm walking thank you very much for for watching I was just gonna say thank you very much for talking <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you next time.